Hi everyone, Sir Ferry here. Welcome to our subject, Empowerment Technologies. So here are the objectives for today's lesson. Identify varied online platforms and sites. Evaluate existing online creation tools, platforms, and applications in developing ICT content. And appreciate the importance of information and communications technology in education. To formally start our lesson, let's have first a short review on the basic ICT tools. So I will be showing some basic ICT tools on the screen and what you're going to do is to name them and I'll be asking some follow-up questions right after it. So here is the first one. The second one. Okay. Very good. Okay. Excellent. So here is a follow-up question. How do you consider ICT tools as a functional tool for you as a student? Yes, very good. ICT tools allows you as a student to monitor and manage your own learning, think critically and creatively, solve manipulated real-world problems, work collaboratively, engage in ethical decision-making, and of course, adapt a global perspective towards issues and ideas. Well, I guess you're all ready for our next lesson. So this time, I'll be showing you a video clip, then try to observe because I'll be asking some follow-up questions later. This video is not audio supported, so just try to observe. So here are the follow-up questions. How many times have you checked your phone this morning? Okay, once, twice, very good. And how many updates have you posted on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram today? Okay, okay. Do you use the internet or mobile for an hour after you woke up this morning? Yes, okay. And have you followed a celebrity crush or on his or her social media? Okay, okay. So all your answers are correct. And from your answers, it shows that some of you or most of you are really attached to social media. But we also need to consider the so-called control of using social media. Why? Because too much of it will result to some illness and sometimes stress. So I have here another short video coming from YouTube and try to observe what the video is all about.
So what was the video all about? Yes, it was all about information and communications technology. So now, let's define what is ICT. Information and communications technology or ICT for short often deals with the use of different technologies such as mobile phones, telephones, computer, internet, and other devices, as well as software and applications to locate, save, send, and manipulate information. Empowering ICT is important for its innovative uses and impacts our daily lives. It has affected our ways of communicating, made our lives more convenient, and assisted countries towards their modernization plans. Thus, there is a need to create a foundation of understanding in the world of ICT. ICT has greatly contributed to how easy our lives has been today. Our gadgets have become part of our necessity that we check on them after we wake up. It made communication easier and we can use cellular phones that are designed for communicating with other people even they are miles away from us. It has also assisted us in our work since there are internet-based jobs. It has revolutionized our education and in the modernization of our economy. So that's what ICT is. Now let's talk about ICT in the Philippines. Philippines is dubbed as the ICT hub of Asia because of huge growth of ICT related jobs and one of which is BPO or Business Process Outsourcing or call centers. In a data gathered by the annual survey of the Philippines Business and Industries in 2010, the ICT industry shares 19.3% of the total employment population. When the internet was fully commercialized in 1995, it has tremendously impacted culture and commerce, including the rise of near instant communication by email, instant messaging, telephony or voice over internet protocol or VOIP, or two way interactive video calls, and the World Wide Web with its discussion forums, blogs, social networking, and online shopping sites. Internet is a global system of the interconnected computer networks that, the uses, that uses the Internet Protocol SUT or TCP or IP to communicate between networks and devices. Now let's move on to the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is an information system on the Internet that allows documents to be connected to other documents by hypertext links, enabling the user to search for information by moving from one document to another. It was invented by Tim Berners-Lee. The World Wide Web browser software such as Microsoft's Internet Explorer or Edge, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, Apple's Safari, and Google Chrome let users navigate from one web page to another via the hyperlinks embedded in the documents. 
These documents may also contain any combination of computer data, including graphics, sounds, text, video, multimedia, and interactive content that runs while the user is interacting with the page. The web has enabled individuals and organizations to publish ideas and information to a potentially large audience online at greatly a reduced expense and time delay. So that's what the World Wide Web is. And now let's talk about the types of web pages. There are three types actually, the Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and 3.0. Let's talk about Web 1.0 first, or the web. It is the first stage of the World Wide Web evolution. It is a flat or stationary page since it cannot be manipulated by the user. Take note of the term, it cannot be manipulated by the user. The websites built during this was very simple. Mostly are just text, and if you see some images, it doesn't have yet a high resolution. Especially that time, our internet is not as fast as what we have today. The Web 1.0, the Web 1.0 lasted from 1989 to 2005, and it was considered as the read-only website, just like what I've said a while ago. It cannot be manipulated by the user, which means the user can only read the text written on that particular web page. Now let's talk about Web 2.0. Web 2.0 or the social web allows users to interact with the page. The users may be able to comment or create a user account. The most websites that we visit today are Web 2.0. Okay. So unlike the web 1.0, the users here are able to put some comments, just like on Facebook. That is why it's dynamic. An example of it is a reader, reader in a vlog, where he can submit his or her opinion, his or her opinion. And users now can make their own posts with, within the page. Web 2.0 is the second phase of web development. The users are also can interact not only to the web page but also to the other users. It was like almost any content that you want to share on the web is shareable. Okay, take note, most websites that we visit today are web 2.0. Now let's move on to the web 3.0 or the semantic web. The semantic web provides a framework that allows data to be shared and reused to deliver web, web content spe specifically targeting the user. Search engine will learn about you and your habits. Okay, Search engine will learn about you and your habit. From each search you perform and will gather details about you from your previous activities like likes and social postings and present the answers as per your preferences. So those are the types of web pages. Okay. Okay, let's talk about features of Web 2.0. First feature is Foxonomy. According to the definition, allow users to collectively classify and find information using freely chosen keywords. Example of it is tagging by Facebook. Tagging uses the pound sign or what we called commonly called as hashtag okay foxonomy again allows users to collectively classify and find information using freely chosen keywords okay so that's what feature number one feature of web 2.0 the classify or collectively classify and find information that's what we call foxonomy now let's talk about rich user experience. Rich user experience or dynamic content that is responsive to user input. Okay? The user can click on an image to enlarge it or find out more information. Okay? Since we are talking about 2.0, the web page is responsive here. Okay? Which means you can click, save, download, comment, post, and write down some uh, feedback 
on that particular web page. Now let's move on to the third one, the user participation. The owner of a website is not only the one who is able to put content, okay? User participation, which means the user can participate and write down some comments or feedbacks on that particular web page. Others are able to place a content on their own by means of comments, reviews, and evaluation. Okay, that's what user participation. Okay, the fourth one is the long tail. Long tail services that are offered on demand rather than one on a one time purchase. This is synonymous to subscribing to a data plan that charges you for the amount of time you spent in the internet, or a data plan that charges you for the amount of bandwidth you used. The long tail, that's the long tail. And the last one is a software as a service. Users will subscribe to a software only when needed. Okay, take note, only when needed, rather than purchasing them. Okay, so that's the software as service. So those are the five features of the web 2.0. And that's just it. That was all about information and communications technology. We've learned about the features of web 2.0, the World Wide Web, the types of web pages, the 1.0, 2.0, and the 3.0. Okay. So I prepared here a 10 website. And what you're going to do is to search this website and classify or determine what type of web pages are they. Let's say, for example, the wall from alpha, is it a uh, web 1.0, 2.0, or 3.0? Okay, I will give you 10 minutes for this. Okay, so what is the function of ICT to your studies during this pandemic? Okay, very good, you got it right. ICT is a very powerful nowadays. It can make our life easier and more convenient, but it depends on how we use it. Let's use ICT with purpose and more importantly, to education. So I've prepared 10 items quiz for you, and I want you to answer this for 10 minutes and write your answers in your notebook. Okay, so here's the question number one. What type of web page is classified as flat or stationary? Letter A, Web 1.0. Letter B, Web 2.0. Letter C, Web 3.0. Letter D, Web 4.0. Okay, question number two. What Web 2.0 feature allows users to subscribe to a data plan that charges for the amount of time spent on the internet? Is it letter A, Foxonomy? Letter B, Long Tail? Letter C, user participation. Letter D, application. Number three, what is the name of the symbol that is used to classify and categorize information? Is it letter A, hashtag? Letter B, question mark? Letter C, asterisk? Letter D, at sign? Number four, what specific type of social media allows you to connect with other people? Is it letter A, microblogging? Letter B, social networks? Letter C, media sharing? Letter D, social news? Number five. Twitter is an example of what specific type of social media? Letter A, microblogging? Letter B, social networks? Letter C, media sharing? And letter D, social news? Number six. YouTube and Instagram are examples of what specific type of social media? Letter A, blogs and forums. Letter B, social networks. Letter C, media sharing. And letter D, bookmarking sites. Number seven, what specific type of social media allows its users to post their original content on websites such as WordPress, Blogger, and Tumblr? Letter A, blogs and forums. 
Letter B, social networks. Letter C, media sharing. And letter D, bookmarking sites. Number eight, what type of social media allows you to manage links to various websites? Letter A, blogs and forums. Letter B, social networks. Letter C, media sharing. And letter D, bookmarking sites. Number nine, what do you call the global system of interconnected computer networks that use servers to link billions of devices worldwide? Letter A, websites. Web browser, letter B. Letter C, internet. And letter D, world wide web. And last number, number 10. What type of web page is classified as a dynamic page? Letter A, web 1.0. Letter B, internet. Letter C, web 2.0. And letter So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for listening. Hope you've learned a lot for today's lesson. This has been your Sir Ferry. Stay inspired. I'll see you guys next time.